We computed the demand curves mathematically for various utility functions. Now let's see how we get them graphically. So we hold the price of a good two fixed, we hold the income fixed, and we're just going to vary the price of good one. And then we're going to see what happens to the quantity of good one that the consumer demands. So remember, if we vary the price of good one, holding everything else fixed, that's just going to rotate the budget constraint. Why does that happen? Well, first, let's look at this corner of the budget line. If we haven't varied the price of good two, and we haven't varied the income, remember that this point tells us how much of good two you'd be able to buy if you didn't buy any of good one. So if you spent all your money on good two, how much of good two could you buy? So no matter what the price of good one is, if we're not changing the price of good two and we're not changing the income, that corner is going to stay put. On the other hand, if we look at the other corner of the budget line, remember these all three of these lines give us different budget lines. Each of them corresponds to the same income Y of 20, but different prices for good one, P1. And each time this corner tells us how much of good one you could buy if you only bought good one. Well, if the price of good one is one and you have 20 as your income, well, you can buy 20 units of good one. If the price goes up to two, you can only buy 10. If the price goes up to four, you can only buy five. So by varying the price of good one, we move the, this corner of the budget line either to the left or the, to the right. But this other corner stays put. Now we could change the price of good one and look at all the different bundles that the consumer is going to demand. So perhaps when the price of good one is four, they demand this bundle. When the price of good two, good one is two, they demand this bundle. So we could just do this for every possible price and we would find this curve. We call that the price consumption curve. How do we get from that to a demand curve? Well, it's pretty simple. We just draw another picture right below it. Each point here corresponds to the price that gives us that budget line. In this case, it's P1 equals four gives us this budget line. P1 equals two gives us this budget line. And P1 equals one gives us this budget line. For each of those, we look at how much of good one did this consumer consume? Well, when the price was four, they consumed this much. So we drop down to this axis here, put this quantity of good one, when the price of good one is four, that gives us this point right here. Similarly, when the price is two, we saw that the consumer is going to consume this bundle, and therefore they consume this quantity of good two, good one. So we get this quantity right here. So we get this bundle. Similarly, we get this bundle when the price is good one, this point when the price is good one. And we do that at every possible price to get this curve. And that's how you get the demand curve graphically.